Ruler Long Reads is supported by Lacquer Bicycle Insurance. Lacquer is a team that looks out for each other. Their collective cover is made for cyclists for life on and off your bike. Lacquer has flipped outdated traditional insurance on its head. No more fixed up front premiums. Instead, your monthly contributions are based on the collective's claims that month. Your maximum monthly price is capped, but the savings are all yours. Plus 80% of your money goes straight back into the collective. Fixing, replacing, helping, whatever. And the other 20% keeps their wheels spinning. It's as simple as that. And when things do go wrong, Lacquer's got your back. Claims are handled by experts and usually agreed within a day. So no depreciation or excess. Lacquer does not do annual contracts locking you in. With Lacquer, if you want to leave, you can. Anytime. If you're new to Lacquer.co, you can get a £10 credit by signing up today. Use the code RULER. Winner in Waiting. Written and read by Matt Rendell. In this extract from his book, Colombia es Pasión, Matt tracks Nairo Quintana's rise from Alejandro Valverde's helper to leader in his own right. The 2013 Tour de France saw the Colombian challenge the old order at Movistar and challenged Chris Froome at the top step of the podium. It started among the wheat fields of central France on the 12th of July 2013, at the midpoint of a stage between Tours and saint amand montrand that promised little until, after 60 predictable kilometres, a complacent breeze mustered some unforeseen energy. The peloton quickly split into several groups and flew through the feed zone at speeds that made collecting feed bags a liability. One rider tried and ended up careering into Alejandro Valverde's rear wheel. Before it could disintegrate, the Movistar leader, second overall, streaked to a halt. Instead of swapping bikes, he took a teammate's rear wheel and fitted it himself. It ensured that he would embark on the long chase on his own machine, but cost him precious seconds. Bauke Molema, 12 seconds behind Valverde overall, set his teammates to hold off the Spaniard's return. The entire Movistar team, bar Rui Costa and Nairo, dropped back to help their leader. Nairo's director sportif, José Luis Arrieta, in the team car, faced a dilemma. We had two riders up front. We were only 15 seconds back, so I told Rui Costa to drop back and help. To Nairo, I said loud and clear, I need you right up front. But Valverde never closed the gap. Arrieta was philosophical. We were close, but we never made it, and we lost the chance of a high position overall with Rui. But that's what the big decision-making moments are like. Nairo went from being Alejandro's support rider in the mountains to having Alejandro working for him. Nairo says, I'd prepared well, I was strong, and I knew I was capable. It was confirmation that when you work conscientiously and honestly, good things come. And at that moment, they came to me. Two weeks earlier, at Porto Vecchio in Corsica, Nairo had sat alongside Valverde to take questions from the media. I had asked Eusebio Unsue why he had brought the young Colombian to the press conference rather than the 25-year-old Hui Costa, who'd won two stages in the previous year's tour and more recently his second consecutive Tour de Suisse, or the outstanding Costa Rican Andre Amador, a stage winner at the previous year's Giro d'Italia. Unsue replied, In 1983, Pedro Delgado sat here next to Ángel Arroyo. In 1988, Miguel Indurain sat next to Delgado. Now Nairo is sitting alongside Alejandro. The current leader had each time been shadowed by his successor. In February, Nairo had helped Valverde win the Vuelta Andalusia and the Vuelta a Murcia, while finishing 8th and 11th himself. He had started Paris-Nice in March as Rui Costa's domestique, but both riders had fallen and it was Nairo who finished best, 15th overall, and third in the concluding mountain time trial, behind Port and Tulansky. A week later, he started the Volta Catalunya. At the ski station of Valter dos Mil, Nairo had won in the falling snow. The following day, the race leader, his teammate Valverde, crashed. It meant Movistar went to their home race, the tour of the Basque Country, without a clear leader. Arrieta says, One of the race organisers said to me, That's a puny little team. I said, Let's see who wins. Sergio Luis Arau won stage three and took the race lead with Nairo second, eight seconds back. The following day, Nairo won at Eibar in stage four, shaving off two seconds of Arau's advantage. On the final day, in a rolling 24-kilometre time trial around the Basque town of Besain, 
Nairo finished second, only to time trial world champion Tony Martin, and 40 seconds ahead of Enau. It brought him the first World Tour stakes race win of his career and established him as rather more than Valverde's mountain domestique. He'd returned home late in April after his first taste of the Ardennes classics, then flown back to start the Tour de France. Arrieta says he was there to get a feeling for the Tour and to learn, although anything can happen at any time, so we always said, stay close to your teammates. Reflecting on his new status, Nairo said it had taken time, but that was entirely logical. We Colombians were just beginning to arrive in Europe again, and I was one of the first. Before me, there was only Rigoberto, and maybe one or two more. We obviously had to make friends and show that however strong we were, we were team players. I never felt uncomfortable about it. I did my job, and I learnt all I could, and when my chance came, my teammates, who'd seen me working for them, were ready to do the same for me. The first stage of his first tour in Corsica was unforgettable. I'd done the Vuelta a España the year before, but the level in Corsica was incredible. Only the best were there. I never imagined cycling could be so fast and aggressive. After the third stage, a team time trial around Nice, he and Valverde trailed Chris Froome by 17 seconds. The deficit was unchanged at the start of stage eight, from Castres to the ski resort at Axe trois domaines via the 2,001-metre Col de Paillère. With 36 kilometres remaining of the stage, on the slopes of the Paillère, Nairo scampered out of the group. He glanced left and right and quickly saw no one would be going with him. No matter. He climbed alone for seven kilometres, and as he crossed the summit, the highest point of the tour, he led the stage. Later, in his autobiography, Froome reflected, so this was it. This young and very talented Colombian climber had been sent on a mission. Go early, make the others chase, make them spend a lot of energy and create an opportunity for your leader, Alejandro Valverde. It felt like a tiny victory for me. Quintana was the unknown, the one who could be the dangerous dark horse. Valverde I knew. I didn't fear him. The group containing Froome and Contador passed one minute five seconds later. On the descent, Nairo's lead was brought back to 40 seconds. On the last climb, with something over five kilometres to go, Port finally piloted Froome onto Nairo's wheel, shedding Cadell Evans, Andy Schleck, Andrew Talansky and Daniel Martin. Then Froome attacked, ending the day with a stage win and the yellow jersey. Nairo's self-sacrifice had allowed Valverde to counterattack, take third place in the stage behind Froome and Port, and move up to third overall behind the same two riders. Nairo was ninth that day in the same time as Alberto Contador, one minute, 45 seconds, behind Froome. But that was before the ride to saint amand montrand left Nairo as team leader and eighth overall, five minutes, 18 seconds behind Froome, and two minutes 33 seconds from Alberto Contador and the bottom step of the podium, and the next mountain stage took the riders to Mont Ventoux. On the lower slopes, Froome's teammates moved to the head of the peloton. Behind them massed Omega Farmer Quickstep, the team of Michal Kwiatkowski, wearing the white jersey of the best young rider. Kwiatkowski's teammate, Herz Stegmans, told me, at a certain point, Movie Star wanted to move into our position behind Team Sky. We said no. Nairo tried to bring me down. Stegmans, 23 kilos heavier and 23 centimetres taller, responded by aiming a punch at Nairo. He missed. Words were exchanged and there was some jostling, but we were animals defending our territory, Stegmans tells me. After that they calmed down and sat behind us. Froome laughed about it, but we'd made our point. You don't mess with us. Sometimes you need to show shit like that for good position. The breakaway riders were caught one by one or in pairs. Federigo and Roy with 16.7 kilometres to go. Losada and Impi, 1,500 metres higher up. Pauls, the climber, after another 200 metres. Of the early breakaway, only Chavanel, trailed by Irisa and Riblon, remained ahead. Meanwhile, Bacalans and Nieve attacked. They floated in the heat haze ahead of the peloton. Pete Kenyak and Richie Port shepherded the yellow jersey, 
whose outward-pointing elbows, bowed head and lowered eyes, the wiping of his brow on his shirt-sleeve and the intermittent shaking of the head suggested bad acting rather than genuine discomfort. But you never knew with Froome. From the dappled penumbra of the canopy, a shadow seems to drift ahead of the group. But the pictures cut away, and for a while the move disappears in a sort of heat haze of unknowing. And then we're looking straight at him, elbows tucked in, shoulders showing the slightest of pendulum motions, the head still as a statue, the face dark-skinned and devoid of all expression, boyish, and at the same time ageless. Nairo Quintana stands in the pedals, and we lose sight of him again. The heat is unforgiving, the bitumen ripples and blisters, and it all takes place as if in a far-off dream. The longest stage of the 2013 tour was conceived to test the most robust of hearts. Even before the terminal spike of Mont Ventoux, the profile charted a worrying succession of peaks and troughs. The peloton showed its early defiance by devouring the first hundred kilometres in barely two hours. It is late afternoon now, and the stage is five hours old. For twenty minutes, as the young Colombian continues his attack, Chris Froome, in the yellow jersey of the Tour de France leader, directs his mountain protectors to sustain a pace that places his rivals at the physical limit. Then, as they flag, he unleashes his own vicious acceleration. Even on his wheel, benefiting from the slight vacuum of his wake, Alberto Contador cannot match him. Through clouds of red smoke and cheering fans on both sides, the yellow jersey hurtles upward, approaching his next quarry. Nairo slows, perhaps to recover before the coming duel. Froome rushes past, and gains five metres, but Quintana rides back up to him. Moments of fraught truce follow, interspersed with abrupt changes of rhythm by Froome, to each of which Naira responds, until one and a half kilometres from the finish line, the Briton, out of the saddle and riding at the front, forces the pace once more. For two hundred metres Nairo shadows him, but then he reaches a threshold or limit and relents, and another race starts. With nine wins in sixteen months, he has made a promising start to his career as a professional cyclist. But success or failure is achieved at the Tour de France, so over the next kilometre, against every bodily impulse, Nairo tunnels deep into the pain. On the final right-hand corner, he hauls himself out of the saddle and musters fifteen more seconds of discomfort his pace crumpled into a silent moan, each turn of the pedals an act of self-harm. Beyond the finish line, he coasts down the slight descent with enough awareness to locate his soigneur, who helps him fall as Nairo surrenders to unconsciousness. Not a victory, then, but a victory of sorts, Nairo agonistes in all his remarkable strength and fragility. The mountain stages of the final week saw Nairo climb the general classification as others faded. The final mountain stage fell on the 20th of July, Colombian Independence Day, five years to the day after Nairo had asked Genaro Leguizamo to watch him race. Nairo started the day third in the overall standings, still five minutes, 32 seconds behind Froome, but just 21 seconds behind second-placed Alberto Contador. On the concluding climb of the tour, the Semnors, towering over Annecy, the collective work of Froome's teammates, followed by stinging attacks by Joaquim Rodriguez and Froome himself, left Contador lagging behind. Just outside the final kilometre, in a bid to win the stage, the Briton established a small lead. Nairo eased onto his wheel, then drifted past and sped away into the light. Second overall, in his first Tour de France, with a stage win, the white jersey of best young rider and the red polka dot jersey of the king of the mountains, Nairo had given Colombia a Grand Tour winner in waiting. You have been listening to Winner in Waiting, written and read by Matt Rendell, and an extract from his book Colombia es Pasión, published by Weidenfeld and Nicholson.